We've all heard of people going on extraordinary adventures. But have you ever heard of an astrocrat going on an otherworldly adventure? Well, the astrocrat's otherworldly adventure, serving gods who go too far, is the story of a reincarnated astrocrat with maxed out powers from the gods. And he embarks on a journey that goes beyond this world. The story starts in modern day Japan with a hungry teenager by the name of Shinya Kazuya. Wandering around at night, he sees people screaming and running out of a store because they are being chased by a madman with a knife. He sees two girls coming running out, but they freeze and are too scared to flee the man with the knife. Not knowing what else to do, Shinya tackles the man to the ground, but gets stabbed with the knife in the process. The man runs off at the sight of Shinya's blood. The girls run to check up on Shinya, but it is too late because he is already dying feeling relieved that the girls are safe. Shinya wakes up in a luxurious room and finds himself in the tiny body of a three-year-old, Kane von Silford, the third son of a noble family that lives in a world of swords and magic all around. He still has memories from his past life, and he vows to spend his second chance at life having fun and protecting people. Kane is a cute little boy with silver hair and blueberry eyes. He has a maid called Sylvia, and a doting mother called Sarah. His father is Garm, a high-ranking noble margrave who governs the Gracia territory in the Esford kingdom and has his own army that protects the border against foreign invaders. Cain also has an older sister called Rene who seems to have a little brother complex, as is evident from her obsession with him. Cain finds out that he even has a stepmother and has two older half-brothers. Jin and Alec. Sylvia tells Cain that they live in a magical world and he makes up his mind to live a fulfilling new life. He misses nothing from his previous life, as the last relative he had was his grandfather, who had died not too long ago, but he was still able to access his memories from his past life, and this helps him to read and write at a level far higher than any his age. Cain's abilities impress his family, and he asks for his father's permission to read books on practical magic and the kingdom's history, but he is told that he must wait till he is five to get baptized, and then he can read up on magic. Cain is not allowed to use magic yet, but he does so while managing to hide it from his family. His sister Rene spots him trying to read up on the kingdom's 300-year history in secret and secretly tutors him. From her, Cain learns about the founder of the kingdom, who was an adventurer named Yuya and that there are elves, dwarves, beast folk, and other magical beings in the world. By the time he is finally five years old, Cain is itching to get baptized. On the way to his baptism, he hears his family talk about the protection and magic levels that determine a person's innate talent in this world, and that they are bestowed upon one by the seven pillar gods of the kingdoms. Ranging from one to five, these magic levels help in understanding what skills someone can develop afterwards as well. Cain finally arrives at the Church of Swords with his family and his baptism ceremony begins. Suddenly a bright light overcomes the place and he is transported to the realm of the gods. The god of death and rebirth informs Cain that if he, as Shinya, has not jumped in trying to save the girls from the man with the knife, the man was destined to trip and get restrained by a passerby which made Shinya's death unnecessary because of which he was reincarnated and transported to this world. The seven gods then tell Cain that they will meet soon and he receives all of their protections. Cain returns to the baptism place and his father asks him to reveal his magic status. This prompts Cain to run away and check it in himself first in privacy. It is at this point that he realizes that the gods have maxed out his protection and magic levels to 10 despite 5 being the maximum. He worries about what to do and wants to conceal his new status but he still shows it to his family, and Garm orders everyone to not reveal them to anyone outside the household. Later on, Cain finds a magic summoning book and decides to test it out to summon something cute, but he ends up summoning a scary monster instead while getting his sister and a friend in the way. This reminds him of the accident that had led to his death in his past life. Cain jumps at the monster, casting a return magic spell, which makes it disappear but he falls head first and thinks he's going to die. Luckily, he survives, which makes him believe that he can protect people like he couldn't in his previous life. 
At his fifth birthday celebration later on, his father asks him what he wants to be, and Kane announces that he will become an adventurer who protect people's smiles. Garm then hires two d rag adventurers, swordswoman Millie and elven magician Nina as tutors for Kane, but the sisters struggle to teach him because he has level 10 blessings from the gods of war and magic and is superior in skill to the level 3 Millie and Nina already. Because Kane is only lacking in practical experience and wants to practice magic training outdoors, his tutors take him to the wilderness, where he easily hunts his first monsters and immediately masters every new spell Nina shows him. Kane's monster hunting experience immediately put him straight on skill level 8, as one of his blessings gives him 100 times more experience points than normal. Three years later, Kane is 8, and his tutor's employment contract expires. Kane decides to hunt dangerous monsters to obtain valuable materials from which he crafts thank you gifts. But his magic causes a panic in the city, and people think that monsters are on the loose. Millie and Nina are touched by the gifts, which are both useful and valuable. As time passes, with his maxed out powers from the gods, Kane continues to level up exponentially, even slaying a dragon. When he is 10 years old, he goes to the royal capital to make his debut as a noble. On the way, he notices a battle up ahead and uses magic to teleport and defeat 50 orcs attacking the carriage of Duke Santana. Using magic to help the survivors, Kane also places the fallen knight's bodies in his item box to give them a proper burial later on. Garm arrives on the scene and sees two girls, Princess Telestia Terra S. Ford and Milk Silk One Santana exiting the carriage, bearing the Duke's mark. Kane and his father introduce themselves, after which Kane uses relaxed magic to help calm the girls down. Strangely, the girls started fawning over Kane and force him to accompany him, and their behavior towards him makes Kane uncomfortable. He wants to go his own way, but the girls won't let him and use the carriage attack as an excuse to spend the night with him. They end up flouting Garm's restrictions and sleep alongside Kane instead of in their own beds. And it greatly troubles poor Kane for a week until they finally arrive at the royal capital, where the vice captain Daim thanks Kane for his services in returning Telestia's dead soldiers. He is told to have an audience with the king, Rex, who rewards him for his exploits making him a baron and giving him 10 platinum coins and a mansion. The king then invites Kane to his parlor where he and Silk's father, Eric, thank him for saving their daughters and ask him to marry both their daughters. Left with no choice, Kane has to accept and becomes engaged at the tender age of 10, but is scolded by his father later on. After this weird ordeal, Kane asks for another meeting with the seven pillar gods, who tell him that he has become the most powerful of all humans. They ask if he would like to become a demigod, but also warn him about first being mindful of his limits despite his strength. The gods then force him to provide the world with some Japanese entertainment. Using information from his past life, Kane meets with Wizards Parma, a cat girl he knows since childhood who works at her uncle's Tamani store. Tamani agrees to have his trading company fashion a reverse board game with one version for commoners and another version for the royalty, and they sign a contract before the god of commerce, sealing it for three years. Kane visits his new mansion and finds it derelict and neglected, and repairs it and cleans it with magic in seconds. While showing his brothers his mansion, Garm advises Kane to throw a party for other nobles to acknowledge his new baron title, and Kane decides to craft fine glassware as gifts and conjures up Japanese food and alcohol. Later on, Daim tells Kane to attend a knight's trading session. Knight Captain and Elvis Viscountess Tijuana asks to duel him, but when Kane defeats her, she proposes marriage and drags a bewildered Kane to discuss it with King Rex. Rex is furious, as Tijuana is also the Elvis princess, but he is forced to agree as long as Tijuana's father, Duke Layson, agrees. Meanwhile, Kane's growing power worries King Rex, and it is determined that they should be tested. Tijuana begins demanding daily deals with Kane, which grows his skills even further. Kane is summoned by King Rex, Eric, Garm, Dime, and Magna, and is presented with a magician's grimoire written by the first king and Rex's ancestor, Yuya S4. Kane reads it easily, confirming Rex's suspicion as it is written in Yuya's unknown language. Japanese. Kane is then forced to admit to being a reincarnation 
from Japan, who was blessed by all seven pillar gods, but he insists on keeping this a secret from the public and maintaining his current lifestyle, which King Rex agrees to. Tijuana receives her father's permission to marry Kane, and King Rex feels confident that the boy will make a fine future king of S4. He decides not to lecture Kane about his ways as a son-in-law, but Kane is once again instead lectured by Telesia and Silk on recklessly seducing every woman he meets. When Kane is 12, he registers at the Adventurers Guild and takes a job slaying goblins, but is found by Tijuana, who insists on joining him. She kills the goblins while Kane deals with the green lizards nearby. Unintentionally stealing a quest from Millie and Nina, he is directly promoted to A rank so that he can be assigned the most dangerous quests. The gods watch this with amusement, but they need Kane to be even stronger as the dark god Aaron will soon awaken to destroy the world. The gods decide that Kane needs an instructor and have just the one in mind. He attends the entrance exam for Royal Academy but accidentally destroys the magic safety barrier during the magic exam. Nonetheless, he gets a perfect score and chooses to study adventuring, magic, and magic items. A psychic message directs Kane to the library, where he is teleported away by a man who knows he is a reincarnation of Shinya Kazuya. The man turns out to be Yuya Hirasawa, who also happens to be the king Yuya S. Ford. He reveals that he has created his own world, Fabnil, becoming the new god of creation, and agrees to train Kane. He also hints that Aaron has links to Kane's former life. He then proceeds to dump Kane in the wilderness, albeit with the warning that the monsters in this realm are tougher. Kane rescues a Fenrir puppy he names Haku, and they survive four brutal years before making it back to Yuya. Yuya reveals that Aaron was the god of amusement, but he became corrupted and pit kingdoms against each other in death games for fun. Yuya also reveals when he was reincarnated from Japan, as were two other people, Seiya and Megumi, Kane's parents who died in a car crash. They were Yuya's dear friends, but were killed fighting Eren. Kane is sent to train as a warrior with the elf Derain, whom he defeats a year later and is returned to Esford with Haku and Derain's pet dragon, Gin. Yuya gives him a sword for Rex. Kane tearfully reunites with Telesia and Silk after five years apart. Meanwhile, Rex is shocked when he learns Kane's story and sees Yuya's katana. Circumstances leads Kane to rampage through a monster-infested forest and dislodge a crystal from its hiding place, which is eaten by a dragon that becomes possessed by a fragment of the returning Aaron. Well, that brings us to the end of the review of the ultimate isekai adventure of a teen-turned-child who the gods had summoned because a great evil would awaken around his 16th birthday. Although the boy with godlike powers is trapped in a beautiful kingdom that he didn't create but might one day rule. What do you think of the aristocrat's otherworldly adventure serving gods who go too far? If you haven't already, I'm sure this review will make you want to watch it. And if you have seen it, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Thanks for watching this anime recap and stay tuned to this channel to find out about the most popular anime.